now, now, I, I don't know if they want me to still preach. Because they preach all the sermon. They finish the message for me. What more can I preach? Can you imagine? I appreciate the choir with you. Thank you. Last night, I was, uh, while still standing, we're going to, I have uh, 15 minutes to deliver this message. I want to preach on the resurrection power. Resurrection power. And um, last night, I was, uh, I listened to an old, old tune. I love those old tunes. Uh, and I sent it to Minister Hike and a few people that, wow, I wish I'd given you this two weeks ago to do this number for me. The, th the, the thing is, if God is dead, it was taken in 1977 uh, by a group of leaders, and they, they sang it beautifully well. Of course, I'm not too sure we can even sing it today. I love that song. So, if God is dead, you know. So, I, I told them to, to, to give it to me on, on YouTube. We're going to read the theme, the text today. We're going to sit down and listen to that. So, I love it so much because I'm, I know it lives, it lives, it lives. He lives, he lives, he lives. You know the song? We sang it in the 80s. It, it, you know the song, so I'm sure you know it. It was taken in 1977. So that's it. We're going to play it in a short while. Just give me a second. It's a powerful song, you know, for time. I mean, this is not a group that sang it. They, they just took it after that group uh, you know, wrote it. So while still standing, Philippians chapter 3, keep it there. Keep it there for me. Philippians chapter 3, verse number 10, through to verse number 12. I want to speak on the power of his resurrection. Thank you for that wonderful song by the choir. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I'm apprehended of Christ Jesus. Father, we ask that you show us the mystery of the power that brought you out of the graves and emptied that tomb. That we may know what you can do today and we may connect our faith and activate that power to do wonders in our lives. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sit down. Sing, give, me that, give me that YouTube. I, 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 because today's message is a clarion call to revival. The modern day church has forgotten the entire thing about our faith. I'm going to sing that. Yeah, give it to me. Go ahead. YouTube. I like it. Just this is just three, four minutes. You know the song, don't you? Just.
Put your hands together for Jesus, everybody. Put, how many of you agree God is not dead? How many of you know God is not dead? Hallelujah. That's the kind of song we listen to in the 80s uh, before these modern day born again believers. That, that kind of thing will just, you listen to it for two hours and you're just dancing on your own. You know, you, 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 get, you don't know song. I you know they sing. I know they sing. And bah! If God is dead, praise God in the highest. Now, I want to preach this message because I'm bothered about the state of the church. In the first service, I explained to us from 1 Corinthians 15, from verse number 12, trying to make a defense uh, for our faith. To say, if Christ be not risen, then our faith is vain. Our preaching, by the way, is also vain. If Christ be not risen, then we are still in our sins. If Christ be not risen, then those that died, died in vain. That's what Paul said. If Christ be not risen, then that means we have no part in eternity. If Christ, if Christ be not risen. Because the entire Christian faith is predicated on the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior. I told them in the first service that Easter was about the birth of Christ. Sorry, Christmas about the birth of Christ. Easter about the birth of Christian faith. Not Christ. The birth of Christian faith. For unto us a child is given at Easter, at Christmas. A son is given when at Easter a child is born at Christmas. A son is given on the cross. Two different things, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Two different things. But, but today, I also want to go philosophical, not doctrinal. Because lately I've been going that route to explain to people some few things about our faith. And I'm going to the power of his resurrection. The power. What happened that day, that Sunday morning, that brought him out of the grave. The power of his resurrection. I've been thinking for years about the nature of the nature of that power. If you understand the nature of that power, oh, maybe then a lot of things will happen to God. We no longer teach that. Why? Because we have been secularly minded. The church is secularly minded, secularly. We think secularly, always. And that's what we produce for as a man think it. So he says. So we produce as secular believers because our thinking, our mindset is secular. I was sharing with somebody in the UK about leadership and I, I said to him, I said, I'm tired of all these leadership preachers because again, what they teach, what they teach is Harvard. What they teach is what is taught in MIT. What they teach is what is secular. Secular leadership principles. Secular. I'm not against that because we're human beings. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. But, 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 there is also leadership. S-H-E-E-P. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me. He leadeth me. Christ is also a leader. His principles are different. Matthew 21. He said, do not lead like the Gentiles lead. Meaning there are two kinds of leadership techniques. So, lead this way, not that way. So, if you go that way, you bring those ideas into this place. You're saying, let's think as human beings, not think as Christians. Do you get the point now? Do you get it? So meanwhile, I'm saying, no, 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 no. In church, leadership principles are different from in the world. No marketplace. Church is a world, a kingdom on its own. Here, be your servant. There, be the boss. Here, accept. There, reject. Here, there are different ways. Yeah. Don't tell me, oh no, we're all human beings. I know, but I'm a believer. I'm born again. I'm different from them out there. That's why we do not see a lot of manifestations of God's power anymore. Today I will share you the secret. I'll tell you why. Today I'll tell you why. So my objective today is to try, let me tell you, to explain the nature of the power that raised Christ from the dead. That's my objective. What kind of power? What kind of power? The power of his resurrection. What kind of power? Listen, it's not nuclear power. Let's first establish that. It's not natural power. 
It's spiritual. It's not nepa, nepa, electricity power. It's not nepa. It's not nepa. It's spiritual. No, the power of his resurrection. A man said that I may know him and the power. I want to understand and experience. It's called experiential knowledge. It's not the power that you and I know of today. It's not science. It's not science. It's, not, it's more than science. It is supernatural, spiritual, supernatural power. It's not diabolical. Because diabolos, Satan, is also a spirit being. So he also has spiritual powers. So and they do things, ritual killings, they, they conjure, they cast spells. Oh, the Bible speaks about the powers of the enemy. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. I give unto you power to tell upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy. Diabolos. Yours will supersede them. Authority, exousia, power, dunamis. Two different things. But we're talking about dunamis, which is megatons, not exousia which is authority. When it says the power of his resurrection, it's inherent. There's something that God wants us to have. That's why we don't have healings anymore. Wonders, miracles. Because the only thing that can birth supernatural miracles are supernatural power. So if you don't have supernatural power, people will not be healed in church. You will not have wonders. You will not have miracles. That's the only way they can come. If you don't have electricity, you will not have light. Am I communicating? If you want to have light in your house, turn on the power generator. Then you have power. Up Nepal or down Nepal. Am I communicating? I don't think Nigeria has nuclear power. Other countries have it. We can't even do Nepal. We can't have nuclear power. So nuclear power can... You know, I watched the movie Oppenheimer. Have you seen the movie? Go and watch on Netflix. About those that made the first atomic bomb. And Albert Einstein regretted because if, if he had known, he had assumed that Hitler would make atomic bomb first. He was a Jew pushed out of, he was a German Jew pushed out of his own country. He was the finest physicist on the face of the earth. So he moved to America and he said, look, he wrote to the president, listen to me, if you let that guy get this power force, I have the mathematical solution, he will destroy the world. Let me teach you how to. He said, please give us. He gave them all the money. I said, if I had known it would be used to destroy humanity in Japan, I would never have given them the solution. One man created the scientific destructive weapon. Boom! People die! Power pass power. Have you heard that? Power pass power. I'm speaking about the power of God here. Oh, forgive me, forgive me. I'm not speaking about that guy calling the bosky that says he's a liquid meter. No, not that one. Before let's see, let's see, people start looking at me and say, Sir, what about in that bosky power? Please, please, it's not in that bosky power. Do not get it wrong. <laughs> because. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, my people can be saying maybe that is speaking in the bosky power oh no not that one somebody shout power, power. shout power. power let Archbishop in the house I went to preach in America he told them he said, you guys don't understand power he said when you call power in America you call it without force he said you call it the power of God he said no no we don't call it the power of God he said the power of God when you say power in a powerful way Africa understand power somebody shout power Aha! That's how they shout it. No power. <laughs> Praise God. The resurrection power. There's something called power. It's megatons. That's why I will teach you why he rose. Again. You will understand today. If you understand the nature of God's power, what the, the nature is powerful. That's why we don't have healings anymore. We don't have the only way you can work wonders. In the things of the spirit, you should use supernatural sources or resources. Exactly. If you don't use supernatural resources from God, you can't get supernatural results. Hey, there's no other way. There's no other way. So how come what used to happen in the Bible days does not happen anymore? As, is it that God has diminished in power? No. We call him omnipotent, all powerful God. He has not. He has not. The same power resides in you today. He has not. 
The only difference is we don't understand to activate God's power. The only one tool is called faith. Faith is the only activator. Go and search all through the Bible. You find men getting healed. Somebody activate their faith. You find men raising the dead. Somebody activate their faith. Jesus told them, I am the resurrection. I am the life. I told you, if you believe, if you believe, you will see Lazarus come out. It's faith. It's faith. So when the devil says, let's stop teaching faith, let's tell the church to weaken faith, they are weakening what? Power. Because faith activates what God can do. That's why they came to Jesus one day, remember? In Matthew 17, Sir, why could we not cast this one out? We have power, we've done a few things, but this was because of your unbelief. Which means faith can increase. Faith can do. They said in Luke 17 verse 5, increase our faith. Increase our faith. Increase so your faith can be small as a measure. Romans 12, verse 3. Every man is given a measure of faith. That measure needs to be what increased. How by release. The only way to increase faith is to release it. The small you have, release. You see the things happen, it's strength of it to do more. Release to do more. I remember those days I used to go to crusade grounds. When I went there, I released my faith to pray for the sick. They get it. Wow. I said, Let me pray for the blind man. He gets it. Wow. Let me pray for the deaf. If you pray for the blind, it doesn't get healed. You say, well, maybe I shouldn't go. Let me go to my headache level. You go back to headache only, headache only, headache only. When you see the cripple walk, it strengthens your faith again because there's a power on your inside. You just will activate, release it. I believe in God. In the name of Jesus. And then it goes, what is happening? That's why Acts chapter 3, when they asked Jesus, well, Peter, what happened here? He said, listen to me. Why look ye unto us? He said, faith in Jesus' name has made this man whole. Faith, verse 14, in Jesus' name has made this man whole. Such as I have I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. When Christ said, all powers in heaven and on earth has been given to me, go ye therefore and delegate. Go and do wonders. Don't, don't mess it up to think, oh, when he said in John 14, 12, greater works shall you do. He's not saying greater in quality, greater in quantity. For no man can have greater works in quality. He raised the dead. Tell me which other quality work you can do. You cannot be more powerful than Jesus. John chapter 3, verse 34, he says to us very clearly that God did not give him the spirit with measure or the power was within him. He had unlimited power. Have you seen what you unlimited data? My phone in the U.S., they say unlimited data. One day I went to Mexico with my phone. Data was not for me. I said, why? They said, in the U.S., unlimited. In a... That wicked people. So they charged me. I went to Canada. I got my bill. They charged me. I said, why? They said, unlimited here, not there. If I use it there, I will pay. Yeah, we don't even have unlimited. Everything is limited. <laughs> Everything is limited. Are you with me? So you find a Jesus... Who says to you, God gave him what? The spirit without measure. John chapter 3 verse 34. Without measure. Meaning, he was so. That means the power of God can be what? Measured. So for instance, man of God, Pastor Jackson, may have greater faith than me because he has seen greater wonders. It doesn't mean I don't have the power. The power of God is there, but he has activated not 5 kVA power. He's activating 50 kVA. He's activating 100 kVA. You are still trying to activate 1 kVA power. And that's why I said you are doubting it. Because you walk more in the flesh than in the spirit. You walk more in the flesh than in the spirit. Yeah. The power of God. I'm not speaking about authority. Delegated. No, my power. Dunamis. Dunamis. Or what we call dynamite. Dynamite. Jesus had megatons. I'm going somewhere. He had megatons of power. Someone say megatons. You know, I don't even know how to explain it. Megatons. Give me a word for it. Megatons. You know, you know, science have tried to do what Jesus did, but they tried. What do you call that thing again? The And I'm not in that bosque. Eh? You know that thing they used to jack you up when somebody is in coma. Or somebody is down. They, 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 eh? they put when your heart cardiac. They say, hey, go ahead. Boom! It's not coming up. They're trying to resurrect. 
they put power into that body. Do you know they will say increase it, increase it. Am I right? It has measure. They say increase, increase to 40 kg. Boom! It's not coming up. Increase again. You don't get it. The more they increase, they're likely to come back. To come back. The person now goes, Bruh. they just saw scripture. Everything the Bible they're trying to do. Elisha laid on that man and said, Come back to life! Seven times and then sneezed. <laughs> sneezed three times. Second Kings chapter 5 6. That's how it came back to life. They had the power of God. Gehazi had small. Elisha had megatons of power through faith. He said, Take my staff, go and raise the dead. Oh God, no fear is that more. Zero KVA. <laughs> Somebody, somebody said zero KVA. So Elisha went there. He laid on the child. Bread. And the child sneezed. Saying, I'm coming back. Exactly what you guys do. When you do, bah, the child now comes back. You guys are copycat. They copy scripture. They now go and do their own thing because science is. Everything there is in scripture. It's in scripture. I thought you would clap for Jesus. It's in scripture. The church has backslidden. Because we preach less of God's power, so we depend less on God. We preach less of God's power, so we depend less on God. We depend more on ourselves. Blessed assurance has become blessed insurance. We worship money more than God. Everything we do, we think it through. We think it through. We think it through. We consult our minds more than our spirit. We consult our minds. We call decision making. Everything is your mind, your mind, your mind, your mind. And your mind is not renewed. So tell me how you can now experience the resurrection power. Look at Paul. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. The power, the something that brought him from the dead. That power is supernatural. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. It says, if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in you. Mama, mama, mama. If that spirit dwelleth in you, it will also quicken your mortal bodies. What are you telling me? There's something that can happen if you understand the power on the inside of you. If you can only understand what you carry, you have no clue what you carry. Some of you carry megatons of power, but you refuse to use it. And you're still in darkness. You have generator in your house, you're in darkness. It's not my fault. Put on generator. Even though you put on once or twice, you refuse to refuel it. It's called prayers. You have to buy diesel. Do you get my point? Sir, I used my generator spiritual last year and I saw wonders. This, uh, I put it on, put it on, it's not working. Have you refueled? How do I put this inside it? Do you spend time with him? That's prayers. That's what we refer. Penel is coming next Sunday. You refer it. Rabake Bojete. He does speak it in a long tongue. Edify it himself. You are getting ready for another release. Have you spent time with him in worship? You are not you are telling me that you are putting it on, it's not working. Why will it work when there's no food inside? There's no scripture tells us Jesus will retreat to go and pray. Retreat many times. If Christ will pray, I know Joe told me, Johnny, they say, Jesus Christ of our Lord prayed. Why shouldn't we pray? I don't, you, you Christians, I don't understand you. If Christ can go and be praying, Son of God is praying, Son of God. God himself on earth is spending time to pray. You are saying, we don't need to pray. That is to be yourself. I mean, if Christ can pray, why shouldn't we pray? Why shouldn't we pray? That's why we don't see God's wonders anymore. Because our faith is weak. Our dependence on his power is non-existent. We've not preached it. Don't forget I told you, it's what you preach that we believe. Our faith is vain, then your... Sorry, our preaching is vain, then your faith is vain. That's how Paul arranged it. Paul said then, our preaching is vain, then your faith is vain. Because our preaching strengthens your faith. Strengthens your faith. Is somebody in church? Are you sure? So this power is what? Supernatural, not what? Natural. I'm not speaking nuclear energy. It is measurable in capacity. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 29 to 31, very clearly, it told us there that even the young will be tired, they'll be willing, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He said, he giveth power to the weak. He giveth power. 
He will load you. He will load you. It's spiritual. It is spiritual. It is spiritual. It's not natural. I keep saying that. It is spiritual, not natural. Sourced from the realm of the spirit, from his presence in you. Spiritual. First Corinthians 2 says that we speak spiritual things to men of the spirit, not men of natural. For the natural man cannot comprehend the things of the spirit. The natural man cannot comprehend. First Corinthians 2.14. The natural man. So deep calls unto the deep. Deep calls. So if I say today, hey, I'm going to pray for you, you know what I'm doing. I'm connecting and I'm activating. I'm releasing his power to do wonders in your life. So if they tell me what God cannot do, those things, I know that. The question is, how many of us are going to activate our faith to, to get it done? To see manifestation of his power. Praise God. His faith. His faith. His faith. His faith. And today, I will tell you a mystery. The only time the power of God, listen, was manifested. Listen to this statement. The only time the power of God was manifested without the faith of man was resurrection. There's no other passage in the Bible where you see manifestation of God's power without a great man of God releasing his faith to produce it. Whose faith raised him from the dead? Oh, you didn't get it. You, you didn't get it. Whose faith raised him from the dead? Peter's faith. Thomas the doubting one. John that was sleeping. Judas that committed suicide. So whose faith? Tell me any passage in the Bible where you see manifestation of God's power. I will show you there's somebody activating faith. Either the man sick, raising gift of faith or the man praying for them. The preacher, somebody. The only time that we see God's power manifested without the help of man. Nobody's faith brought him from the dead. Is somebody listening? Oh, is somebody hearing me? So whose faith if I tell you it's supernatural and it's faith that activates supernatural power. So whose faith was ac activated the release of the power that brought him from the dead? No wonder the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verse 14 it was impossible. Oh Jesus. Give me Acts 2. It says it's, very, it's impossible. Very simple. Verse 24. Impossible for the graves to hold him. Impossible. You see, it was not. Give me Acts 2 24. Whenever I read it, I, I say, for years I'm wondering how? Whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death. Why? It was not possible. Why? I will tell you why. Today I will answer this. It was not possible for death to hold him. Why? I will tell you why. You know, every grain seed has power to reproduce. Yes or no? Inherent. Yes or no? So when you drop it, that thing germinates and it does what? Produce because of the something inside. Am I right? Do you get the point? There's something about Jesus that we don't know. When he said, I am the resurrection and the life. You know, I, I, I do understand that yes, two days ago. Not I can. Not I have, I am. Let me know what happened. Let me tell you. Shh, shh, shh. It's a secret. Shh. Jesus Christ, when he was walking on earth, had the megatons of God's power, too much power in him. Watch me. So when he died there, he just went to sleep for three days. He went to sleep. The power of God here, because he said, destroy this temple on the third day, I will come back. The power of God here, on his own, Mm. Because it was impossible for power to be held down. He who did it, so the thing, so he rose up himself. He rose from the dead, connected to Baba. Baba sent angels. Because for Lazarus' tomb, human being had to roll the stone. Baba sent angels, go and remove the stone. Because man could not roll the stone away. It was impossible for him to be in the grave. It was, it was not possible. The power he, what he carried was too much to be held down. And I don't know if he had to come back. He had to come back to 
your life without the help of man. For no man had more power than him. I can come to say, rise. That was say it was impossible. It is not possible that the thing will hold him down. I cannot explain it. It was too much for the ground to hold. Too much. Too much. The angels were commanded to tell me, I'm sleeping, I want to wake up. You get man, and I've conquered death permanently. And angels rolled his stone away. They came out. He folded their clothes for them. Human grave clothes. He folded it well and put it there. Supernatural clothing came. The power of his resurrection clothed him. Something put clothes on him. That the, the Adam, Adam was naked and ashamed. He said, this time around, I will not be humanly naked, but I will strip your human material clothes. He folded the grave clothes, put it there. They saw him. But sir, are you naked? I'm not naked. So who clothed you? Who brought heavenly clothes for you? Eh? He gave him clothes. Who gave him the clothes to wear? Which was designed exactly. That's why I tell you, you don't understand it. That God was the first fashion designer. When Adam sold clothes from leaves, God said, let me clothe you well with skin. God said, you know, you're not dressed well. Bible says, this is not good for you. You have committed sin. God clothed Adam. And then removed him. I don't want to go there. If I go there, people will not like my statements there. Because there are two kinds of clothes we all wear, Adamic and spiritual. I don't know whose dress you are wearing. The word that was used there was to cover. Some was to clothe it. Two different things. So if you see men stripping themselves naked, that's human. Whenever God clothes you, he covers you. Don't go there. Are you getting it? Whenever God clothes you, he covers you. If you see women exposing themselves, that's Adamic clothing. They are still using fig leaves. Shame unto you. You're not being clothed by God. God covers. You can be. I, I, I don't want to go there. Do you get the message? You don't get it. Go and ask for interpretation. Go and ask for what? Not me. Not me. I am the resurrection of life. So the reason you could not be held down was because he had mega tons of power. There was no way that thing could hold him down. The dust could not hold spirit. Dust could not hold spirit. Spirit came back to life. Came back to life. That's why the only time ever, like I said to you, the only time ever that resurrection, the power of God was in manifestation without the faith of man was at the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every other time man's faith is deployed to heal, to raise the dead, to resurrect, to do anything, man's faith is released. But this time, nothing like that. Nothing like that. You forget, it's not natural, it's not esoteric, it's not diabolical. The difference between God's power, pure, and satanic power, impure, is that devil's power, which is spiritual as well, is used negatively to destroy. But when he left God, he left his spirit in, of intent, so it's also powerful. All the powers of the enemy. But God's power is used to correct, to heal, to raise, to help, to lift, while the other is to destroy. So if the devil gives you gold, be careful, he's going to destroy you. If God gives you gold, he's going to bless you. For it's the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow. You get it? One will make rich with sorrow. <laughs> so, so riches with sorrow, riches without sorrow. Two different things. The power of God, write this down, is always to do the will of God. That's why, don't go there. I'm telling you why we are seeing less of the manifestation of the power of God. Watch me. If I want to pray for the sick to be healed, so that make them like me and favor me, that's not the will of God. You miss that. For every time Christ healed, he was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. This woman is going through a lot in Jesus' name, right? He was healed. He was moved with compassion for the person. Today, we are not moved with compassion. We are moved with social media. That's as I'm healing, I'm saying, camera, 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 camera. Take me, take me, take me like that. Rabba, 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 rabba. There's no compassion. So they can go and show the world fame. We are moved with quest for fame. 
that is not the will of God. That's why we say less of the power of God. You cannot use his power to glorify yourself. It's to glorify him. You're getting it. We keep praying. Nothing's happening. Ah! Your prayer is for you to magnify yourself. So you want to use God. Like you've used men. And you think God does not know your heart. He searches the heart of men. If my purpose of praying, Lord, please, heal this your daughter. God sees my heart. And I release the power. And I use authority both. My authority as an apostle. The power that I have on the inside. In the name of Jesus, rise up and work. It had nothing to do with fame. When Peter was healing that person, it was not fame. He even held him up. And the man was going to make noise. Come on, I'm healed. Oh. He wasn't the one that was doing it. There was no camera. They didn't want camera. They didn't want people to know about, about it. Flesh. Flesh is driving everything that we do. And we expect the spirit to obey flesh. No. Genesis 6. My spirit shall no longer strive with man. Spirit will not obey flesh. Flesh will obey spirit. So if flesh is driving our efforts. And we expect the spirit to obey and do wonders. It won't work. Can you not see why we don't see healings anymore in church? Especially those that are scripted prophetic manifestation. Not those scripted ones. We script it and we manifest it and we act it. And we're deceiving ourselves. But for God is not there. It can be so noisy and God is not there. God told Elijah, have you seen the earthquake? Yes. Am I there? No. The fact that there is noise does not mean it's from God. Let me give you seven things the power of God will do for you. The resurrection power. Seven things. According to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 to 20, you need to understand resurrection power is something that is a dynamite. We don't even know it. So I, I wish I could explain this, oh God, help me. That's why he had to get out of that grave. That's why. No man came to help him. No faith of man was used. And it was power. He had it. It was not man's faith. And it just came out. He came out of the graves. There was a seed. The guy, it was impossible for him to stay there. Eh? For the word became flesh. Not dust became flesh. The source of his body was the word. The source of his own body. The source of our own body was his dust. We are dust. Dust thou art unto the dust. Thou shalt return. He was in dust. He was not dust. He was not made. He's not, he's not made in China. He was not made from dust. It was combination but more of the word and the word became flesh. So how can the word be held down by dust? And the word became flesh. That's the mystery and I can't say it of the blood in that flesh. For the life of the flesh is in his blood. Leviticus 17 11. So if this flesh was word sourced, the life of that flesh is the blood is the blood. So what kind of blood is the blood that the word carried? First John chapter 5 verse 7. There are three that bear witness on us. The word, the water, and the blood. I can't explain it. The source of the flesh that was moving is not normal. It's not natural. Not natural. That's why it is impossible for that thing to hold him. It, the doors cannot hold him. We're not compatible. Water and oil are not compatible. You know, uh, uh, compatibility. You know, I do not explain it. You know, there's some elements that are compatible. Some elements are not. Magnet and uh, steam. Uh, uh, so, much, exactly. so there's dust and his flesh are not compatible. Am I too scientific? Are you with me? I'm trying to help you so you can understand your faith. And so when you, when you sing now, you are singing glorious. Wow. He's alive. He's alive. So when you say that, you understand why he's alive. Every other prophet is in the grave. His own grave, his own tomb is empty. The only one. Put your hands together. The only one. The only one. Every other person, their tomb is not empty. The only one. They can't find his bones. Archaeologists have tried. They can't find his bones. DNA of his blood is sinless. Oh God, don't go there. That's why by the power of his blood we are saved. That's why the blood is powerful. 
When we take communion, you have to understand the source of that blood. It's not Ebina. It's not Bacchus wine. The source of that blood is powerful because you have to link the blood to the flesh. If you do DNA, you find my father's blood in my, my, my bones. Who was the biological father? None. There was no biological father. It was the angel that spoke and the word came, became flesh on the inside. It was just a woman that just carried it. Don't let me carry you. Just a carrier. Coughed out God on earth. Walked on the face of the earth. It was power walking. The demons knew. They knew the sign. They knew. They knew. We need to get to the point where we understand this thing. We don't understand our faith. The first thing about the power of God. That's why I said, I am he that was dead. Revelation 1 verse 18. And now alive. Oh God. You don't know me. I'm the Alpha and Omega. Was dead now. Alive, and I live forevermore. I live forevermore. Forevermore. Never to die again. When he came back, that body he had was a different body. That, that body could defy the laws of gravity. He went up. He didn't come down. If you throw anything up, it comes down. Scientific law of gravity. Went up. He didn't come down. The, the grave could not hold it. He walked through the walls. He didn't need to knock. He walked through the walls. Forty days they saw him. Five hundred people saw him at once. He ate with them. What are you telling me? Come on. Come on. Ah. I'm angry. That people, do, people still doubt this Christ as God. We should bow before him every day. We should crown him king every hour. We should say to him, you are the Lord of life. You are the king of glory. Forever we shall serve you. Put your hands together for him. <laughs> Write it down in four minutes. Number one, the resurrection power is a power that rolls stones away from tombs of men. Whatever stones men have put to block your glory, this power can roll it away. I'm trying to explain to you what this supernatural power can do to this. That's what I'm going to. What it did yesterday physically. Look at me. I'm trying to explain to you physically what that power did yesterday. It can do today if we believe. There's no man that can put anything before you that God cannot move away. There's no stumbling block to your glory that God cannot take away. There's nothing. Nobody can bury someone that God wants to raise. They put stones there. Massive stone before his tomb. Not one man helped them to move it. The woman said in Mark chapter 15, who shall help us draw the stone away? He came and the angels moved the stone away. If I one passage, I think John, and they sat on it. They moved away and they sat. We are in charge here now. <laughs> they say, come if you want to come. Ah! Oh God, that's what the power of God can do. So I don't know what you are going through in your life. Don't you ever think God's power cannot do it? So we first need to activate our faith and say, God, use your power to do things in my life that only you can do. Yes. If I hear you say to me that your grandfather buried something, your grandmother is a witch, they buried in your village, they, ah, you are annoying me. You don't know the power of God. Ah. Years ago, my, my, I lived in my uncle's house. Years ago, my uncle's house, the man was a very rich man, very was the wealthiest man in Jebo day for 70s and 80s. Go and ask Omota Yomowo, the king KBC used to come to his house. Stupendous the wealthy. In the level of Ututola. He had many wives. When he died, one of his wives, late Bola Ige had to go and marry her to show that ah, me to have married a billionaire's wife. You know that kind of thing. There was a flat at the back of that house. It was locked. For close to 12 15 years, nobody opened it because that was where the woman was living. And they said the woman used to draw on him. Nobody opened the house, nobody opened the flat. So one day, we were discussing with my cousins. I just came from a crusade. They said, You, you, power, 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 healing. You, can you go to that place? I go, I said, What is there? Ah, we know there's Judah, don't go there. I said, Let me call the Olori Abi, the head of family, that let's even open this flat. Where is a big four bedroom flat laying fallow? Nobody using it for four weeks, for four, for 12 years. The man said, ah, uh, evangelist, said, you want to go and kill yourself? Don't go there. If you go there, you are on your... I said, why are you afraid? What is there? Ah, something is there. 
Nobody else. Even, even at night, they even hear squeak, squeak. I said, 12 years, a place locked. You are hearing squeak, squeak. They gave me go ahead to go and open the place. Are you with me? I went there. I didn't go with anybody. They were, you see the way at the house are looking at me. We opened. I said, Ram back. I said, hey, get those at all. The it that dwelleth in me is greater than it is in the world. We went in. I emptied each room in the flat. What I saw was amazing. Come and see Kache of Juju, huge Juju. The one that shocked me the most because I took everything and I bought it. The one that shocked me the most, if I tell you, you don't believe it, 12 years. I opened the calabash, I saw a camel alive. 12 years. I don't know if I did. 12 years. Nobody entered the room 12 years. We opened, I saw a calabash. I saw a camel. Look at this. I said, ah, ah, Juju Deo. I lied not in the Holy Ghost. Was still there. I don't know how. I lied not in the Holy Ghost. We killed it. Of course, my panic everything. Look at me, nothing has happened to me. We killed it. We killed it. Because I know the power that I carry. Why can't you be afraid of demon power? You people have problems. You are afraid of demon power. You have a problem. Oh. Ow! Because you don't know what you carry. If you know what you carry, shut up. If you know what you carry. I'm talking power, you're the P. Somebody shout power. <laughs> if you know what you carry, can chameleon come and frighten you? Come on, Abba. We don't know what we carry. Those days, when Nigerian police were refined in their bribery, they would say, what you carry? Now they don't say, they say, give me money. Then they use say, what you carry? We understand it. We are more refined then. <laughs> we, 12 years, I saw it. The children that we packed every time we killed it. They are using the place now. For anyone, they say for rent, for rent. I broke the curse. I broke the curse. What nonsense. How many times have we seen people that will say, come to this place? Nobody can go there. I went to a village many years ago in Badagri. Somebody goes there. If you go there, they will fight you. Why would they fight us? I told you the story. And then as I went to the first day, I finished preaching. Second day, the three Gunuko, three men came dressed in white. They were looking at me like this. It was a crazy ground. They are used to me. They did not utter one word. And they were making any conditions at me. My interpreter, Shagun, you know Shagun? We were preaching. Shagun said, Hey, sir, hold him for me. Hold him for me. Headache. Headache. I said, Shagun, pull yourself together. You must not know that what they are doing is attacking you. He said, no, sir. I cannot. I will collapse. You can't collapse. You are with me. Stand yourself. Stand your ground. The man said, I cannot, sir. He could not preach. He left. I said, okay, I will interpret. One by one, our members were attacked. I was attacked. I felt the body attack. I was praying in tongues, looking at them eyeball to eyeball, and as he preached, Three days crusade, nothing happened. They said what they had thought was we will fall down and die. Go possible. We carry different kind of power. If you carry it, it cannot happen. It cannot happen. Go Today you see people coming to church. Uh, the, the demons are now dealing with a, 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 a demons. Uh, uh, sister, you are, in, you are wearing skirt. Leave that place. Is that a demon? That is in power. And he said, he said, we are no more. We don't understand what we carry. We don't understand what we carry. We don't know who we are. So we kill ourselves. We are jelly. If you hear the prayer point people give, yeah, don't you know who you are? Greater is it that is in you. Are you not aware? Do you not know that he gave you power to throw up serpents and scorpions on all the powers of the enemy? Are you not aware? He said, I beheld Satan fall like lightning from above. Luke chapter 10. Are you not aware? Why are you frightened? Power. Resurrection power. It's the same power of God. It can do many things. There's no different power, but this one can even raise the dead. Let's call resurrection power. Megatons. God will help us to increase our manifestation of his power through faith. By believing in him. Without faith, you can't. Number two, the power that robes man from being naked and ashamed like Adam. That power clothed Jesus. I'm telling you what the power did physically. Number one, he rose to the way. There's nothing physical that God cannot deal with. Number two, nakedness. 
When I say robe, God, when God robes you, no man can derobe you. If God clothes you, no man can unclothe you. You better ask for heaven's robes. Ask for God's clothing. Many times we want men to clothe us with honor. I've always cried to God, God clothe me with honor. When I pray for people, there's some prayers I pray. If you don't say amen well, you don't understand it. Ask people, when you come to office, I pray a different prayer. When I tell you something else, I say, the Lord will honor you. People don't get it. For God to honor man, 4 Samuel 2.30. He said, he that honor me, shall God honor. For God to place honor upon man. God honors a man. When God clothes you with honor, there's nothing any man can do to dishonor you. No matter how they hate you, they can try it, you will be favored everywhere. You'll be favored everywhere. Because you are honored by God. That power also did something. The power that he also blinded and enslaved men that wanted to stop God's work. Remember? Some men, some guards were positioned there. And when the power of God came, they were all slain. All the guards were slain and disarmed. Matthew 27, verse 62 to 66. Go and read it on your own. That's what the power of God can do. There's no man that God's power cannot deal with. No man on earth. The fourth thing that power did, the power that transformed man's body into a glorious body and defied natural laws, that power did. So they say, sir, you have sickle cell. I command the power of God to change and transform your blood in the name of Jesus. How can you say it's not possible? You don't understand it. How dare you say medical report is bigger than God's report? You don't know God. You don't know God. The first physical healing I got from heaven, many years ago I was in the church and I was just a young Christian. I had a big boil on my back. A preacher was there preaching on healing and said, God, is it true you heal? Uh, uh, Jackson, I lie not in the Holy Ghost. I placed my hand at the back. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command this to go. I want to be healed today in Jesus' name. You had the testimony. I don't even had it in church. In two hours, the, thing, not, the boy did not shrink. Disappeared. I had skin. No, disappear. Disappear. No. I screamed. I ran out to give testimony. I said, ah, God did it. I prayed in unbelief, but God did it in healing. Disappeared. I call it the disappearance act. It was written in the church bulletin. Because it happened to me. It was there. You know that he, shrank, he disappeared. I began to have more faith that this God is a great God. I started asking God for healing for healing malaria. For malaria, healing for malaria. So healing is a children's food. It's your own. If you don't want to take it, that's your business. I've said your meal. If you don't want to eat it, you can't force me. Matthew 15. Jesus told the Syrophoenician woman, healing is for children. But if you want it as a stranger, I will give you crumbs. And the woman said, the woman said, crumbs is enough. Look, if crumbs could do what it did for that woman, imagine the whole loaf. <laughs> imagine what the crumbs of God's power can do. Read it. He says, uh, even the dogs eat crumbs. I'm a dog, I know. Let me eat crumbs. You, God, crumbs of your power is sufficient for me. I don't know how rich you are. Some of you, crumbs of, I look at that go this wealth, crumb is enough for you. Crumbs of Warren Buffett's wealth. If you say, I'll give you, I'll give you, eh? Elon Musk's wealth. He said, I'll give you crumbs of my wealth. So it, it, it crumbs. <laughs> so crumbs of God's power. The woman said, crumbs are enough. Give me crumbs. Let the children be getting the loaf. Meanwhile, the children that own loaf, they are hungry, they're not eating it. Because they don't know it's in their inheritance. I won't go there. I, I, am I communicating? We're going to pray now. The, five, the fifth thing, that power conquered death. The power that conquers death and brings back to life. Number six, the power that sends angelic angels, angelic guards to protect and guard you forever. Do you know angels can be on assignment for your life forever? Forever! From today! You command and heaven will command angels to back you, support you, guard you, protect you. Even in the grave, they guarded him. Imagine you having, it's not that with those bodyguards, angels as a bodyguard. No Boko Haram bullet can hit you. Angels as a bodyguard. Finally, the power that empties till today the tombs of men and leaves it bare. You don't know the power of God. That's what God's power can do. Seven things God's power did in one day. 
in the life of Jesus. Seven things. The power of his resurrection. Seven things he did in the life of Jesus. He raised him from the dead. He clothed him. Moved the stone away. He put angels to guard him. He emptied the tomb. And if he could do that physically, imagine the type of that in our lives today. I want you to believe one thing if ever before. All power belongs to God. All power belongs to God. Today we celebrate what the resurrection power did. It rose him from the dead. Put your hands together, everybody. Put those hands together. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. If you're happy, shout hallelujah. Can you help me shout power in a powerful way? Say power. Once more, shout power. For the last time, shout power. Now lift your hands to God and say, Lord, I want you to release your power upon me. For service, we did something different. I don't know what I believe in God for. If like you've never prayed before, lift your hands. Say, Lord, I want you to release God's power upon my life. Ask him, I want to walk with the manifestation of your power. I want to activate it. There's something you carry. When the Holy Ghost came upon you, he gave you power. And you shall receive power. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, it's on his side of you. It's on his side. Say, Lord, help me to strengthen my faith. I want to strengthen my faith to activate my faith. I activate my faith so I can activate God's power. God's power. God's power in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Can I hear you pray? How many of you have stones? Ask the power of God to clothe you. I don't want to be naked. I want you to clothe me, Lord. Clothe me, Lord. I don't want to be naked. Clothe me, Lord. Ask God's power. This is his time. Resurrection. Resurrection power. Resurrection power. Ask him. Ask him to clothe you. To robe you. To robe you in the name of Jesus. To robe you. To robe to roll the stones away, to roll the stones away, whatever stone is before you, let the power of God roll it away, roll it away. Yes, Lord, the power within, the power within, yes, Lord, Magadekeba, I'm the Gede Glegebo, Lake in the Glebo, yes, Lake Baba, I'm the Lake de Glebo, Lake de Glebo, Magadekeba, in the Lake Bo, Lord of God, the power within, the power, the power in the name of Jesus, the power in the name of Jesus, yes, Magade. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Anywhere you are sick in your body, I want to command the power of God to heal you. Anybody that has been a stumbling block on your life, I'm going to release a power to fight your battles. Amen. All those that have pushed stones I say they want to fight the God you serve. I'm going to ask God's power to slay them. Amen. To arrest them. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift your hands above your head. I command the power from within. I activate my faith. Amen. I ask for every man under the sound of my voice that is sick in their body. I release God's power. I command you to be healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, Amen. be healed. 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 Amen. Be whole. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Not a day be resurrection Sunday. I pray for those here who certain people have constituted themselves as opposers and enemies of your work in their lives. I ask Lord, like you slay those gods. Like you slay them at the place of the tomb. I ask you arrest them. I ask you arrest them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray. Every man and woman here will come back with a testimony. Amen. Of your goodness and your power. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can I have a louder amen? Amen. 